Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to present some of the main aims and challenges we are facing on an ongoing project called uh, Digging into Early Colonial Mexico, a large-scale computational analysis of 16th century historical sources, which started the last January, and it still have more than two years ahead. Uh, in this project, we focus on developing novel methods and tools for data mining and spatial um, analysis and representation of textual and pictorial records to answer uh, questions related to early Latin American history. It is funded by the challenge Digging into Data, which is an initiative of the transatlantic platform in social sciences and humanities research. Uh, it's a consortium supported by the British ESRC, the Portuguese FCT, and the Mexican CONACYT. This research is carried out by three teams from Lancaster University, University of Lisbon, and the Instituto Nacional de Antropología e Historia in Mexico. And the project concentrates on a corpus of document known as Las Relaciones Geográficas de la Nueva España, which is something like the geographic reports from New Spain, compiled between 1577 and 1585 in Mexico and Guatemala at the request of the king of Spain at that time, Philip II. Uh, we could say that one of the main aims of this corpus was compile all possible information about the new American domains uh, ruled by the Spanish crown, describing the life of their inhabitants and the state of the new territories five decades after the first contact. Um, these geographic reports were, that form our corpus were the final step of an uh, initiative for collecting information started under the reign of the previous king, Charles I, and the Spanish administration designed several questionnaires uh, with variable numbers of questions, and they sent to all the Spanish territories at that time, uh, which are where Italy and also the different realms of the peninsula, Castile and Aragon, and as well to America. Uh, however, the result was not what they expected, and in 1577, Juan López de Velasco, a royal historian and cosmographer, sent only 50 questions to be answered by the local officials uh, with direct knowledge of the situation in hamlet, villages, and, and towns. Well, our corpus contains 142 textual reports and 62 maps and present an unequal distribution throughout New Spain, most probably related with the, to the knowledge and presence of the Spanish in the American territory. And it tackles multiple questions related to history, geography, culture, religion, economy, and social interaction um, among the different uh, indigenous groups, as well as the relation with the colonial Spanish officials. Uh, because of that, is considered one of the most important sources of knowledge on 16th century Latin America. Well, focusing on las relaciones geográficas de la Nueva España, this project has three main aims. Firstly, to create and assess novel computational methods for the exploration of these historical documents, uh, using the geographical text analysis developed by some members of our team as a starting point. And secondly, to create a set of complex uh, digital data sets from this corpus, which is written in Spanish and prepared with several terms in native languages. Uh, this will include the production of the first 16th century spatial Nahuatl colonial gazetteer and the first 16th century colonial GIS for this region. And finally, to revisit research questions of crucial importance uh, for this historical period, such as three examples could be um, which natural resources were available in New Spain at the end of the 16th century, or what was the economic networks uh, in, the new in the territories of New Spain, or which impact did the Christianism in colonial America. Well, from here I'm going to structure the presentation in two main blocks. First, um, we are going to explore the, well, the creation of the gazetteer, and we will finish with the computational methods. Well, the gazetteer and the GIS system uh, that will help us to dig deeper into our research question, we hope in a near future. And to create them, we have 
several sources of, of, of information. On the, on the one hand, we have all the transcriptions of the original reports, even several versions of the same, several versions. Um, and that provide us with a list of place names um, mentioned into the sources. And on the other hand, we have a large set of historical studies that are being essential for the disambiguation process. Well, we, are, we also have a large number of digital resources which contain the spatial data for, of current toponymy. They, they are essential to assign the X and Y coordinates to the, this 16th century list of place names. And well, some of the most relevant for this study uh, are displayed on screen. The database structure we are using is the Alexandria Digital Library Gazetteer Content Standard because two main reasons. The first one is because it's interoperable with other gazetteers created by other agencies or, or research groups. And in addition to that model includes uh, a large variety of interconnected tables that allow us to collect all the complexity of our data. Well, here we have a, a, just an outline of the methodology in creating the gazetteer. Firstly, we has converted the place name Nilix list into a, a text file. And secondly, we assign X and Y coordinates to them. To do so, we develop a semi-automatic approach for detecting and merging duplicates uh, that confront the place name, the, this 16th century place name compiled into the digitized and the indexes against the digital spatial data. After that is when the disambiguation starts. Uh, this process includes filtering and identifying if the location that the machine has automatically assigned to those places are those referred into the text, because there are a lot of cases in which they are not. And finally, the last step is in which we add all the alternative place names and spellings to our gazetteer. And on screen you have a good example of how many variations or different place names can they have. Well, uh, so far we have been able to identify more than 14,000 toponyms, including the spelling variations of the same terms, and locate with X and Y coordinates less than 5,000. Uh, at this point, perhaps one of the most interesting questions is to know what happened with those place names to which it is not possible to assign uh, X and Y coordinates. Uh, and at this stage is, the, is when the way in which our corpus is structured become a great advantage. Uh, these geographic reports are related to a specific regions. I mean, the, the text is structured by regions or 16th century artificial divisions. And from every region, we have the different reports. So we always know in which area is located approximately our place name. Moreover, in the reports, there are descriptions about boundaries or particular geographical features that, re that are related to our place names, uh, for instance, a river or a mountain range. Uh, therefore, all these footprints enable us to assign those non-located place names to concrete regions or provinces. And in this way, all terms has any kind of a spatial relation, even if it is vague. Well, some of the multiple challenges we are facing with the gazetteer uh, or we are addressing with the gazetteer are, in the first place, those problems related with the encoding. We have, have to be very careful in the transformations in order to maintain the spatial characters such as the N with the, the tile and the C with the tail, and, as, and also the accents. And moreover, as I mentioned briefly, our corpus is multilingual, so we are dealing not only with 16th century Spanish, but also with several native languages such as Nahuatl, Otomi, or Mixteco. Uh, copying with different languages for the same place name, spelling variation for the same toponym, and the application of, tra uh, of Castilian transliterations to ancient settlements names, linguistic and historical developments, uh, and homonymies that are when two or more settlements uh, has have exactly the same name. And furthermore, uh, we need to record towns and villages that disappeared a long time ago. So using GIS has many advantages, such as, well, particularly those related to the easy access and the easy use of these kind of tools. 
uh, beside the amount of uh, spatial day resources we are available today. Um, however, the Cartesian logic and the lack of flexibility were recorded in places become a problem to work with historical data. I mean, particularly historical settlement that suffer constant modifications, relocations in space and congregation in short periods of time. Uh, well, and you all know how difficult it is to uh, cope with time in GIS. Well, Coming, leaving the, the gazetteer aside for a while and coming back to the computational method that we are exploring in our project, we are, this, we are using a big data approach, um, combining modern language technologies, including methods and techniques from corpus linguistic, natural language processing and machine learning, uh, in combination with geospatial analysis such as the GIS. Uh, in recent years, numerous libraries and archives collection uh, has been digitized and are set free of charge in institutional web pages, uh, sites, sorry. In addition, this mm, digitization process often contains not only the text, but also images of map, sketches, drawings, all photographies, or other kind of representation. And in that sense, the potential for archaeology and history is unlimited. As I mentioned before, we use the geographical test analysis as a starting point. This analysis was developed by two members of our team, Patricia Murrieta Flores and Ian Gregory, under the project Spatial Humanities Test GIS Places. These techniques allow to analyze geographies mentioning big corporates of text in a semi-automatic way, as well as to detect patterns of information in their content. The methodology combines techniques from several disciplines, including GIS, corpus linguistic, and natural language processing. So some of the main steps of this method are, well, in the first place, uh, we should have our corpus in a matching readable format. And then is when we, is when we perform the, natu the name entity recognition, the NERD. Uh, at the time of the Spatial Humanities Project, they used the Edinburgh GeoParser, to extract that information and also to assign them coordinates from, uh, from a gazetteer, such as your names. And after that, we extract the data and we can perform analysis such as the geographical collocation analysis, combining that concept of corpus linguistic, uh, the, the collocation analysis of corpus linguistic with geographical location of those places identified. Well, at the end, the result looks like a table like the one you have on screen. And that table, we can, we can convert that table to GIS and perform a statistical and a spatial analysis. In this project, in the Digging into Early Colonial Mexico, Mexico, we want to go a step further in the development of the GTA. And, um, the, the name entity recognition, the NERD, only recognizes four kinds of entities. They are place name, proper names, institutional names, and dates. And in order to expand the number of categories uh, recognized by the computer, we are using techniques from machine learning and text mining. And well, those disciplines are helping us to train the machine to recognize certain topics in the text and extract the, that information that allow us to answer archaeological and historical questions. Because of that, we are using an online platform called TACTOC for, annotation, for annotating the corpus. And we have created 40 entities or types of information. We are interested in extracting from the text. And at this time, we are working in creating a kind of gold standard, tagging several reports from different uh, areas of Mexico. And we will use this gold standard to train the machine to automatically recognize uh, those things into the text. We know we still have a long way to go, but we think that the combination of these techniques will be possible to answer uh, crucial uh, and research questions uh, about related to the places and to the topics we are interested in, and in addition to create a set of tools and resources which in a near future will be open source. That's all for me, thank you.